Welcome back to the Backyard Orchard, talking about citrus growing in your backyard. And in this module, we're going to talk about mandarins, tangerines, and tangelo. Okay, now, are they different from satsumas? Are they different from each other? Well, a lot of that depends on who you ask. Briefly, there are two major citrus classification systems, the Tanaka system and the Swingle system. And They've been either, they've also been kind of mixed with each other and such. And right now, there's a lot of research going on, uh, look, doing genetic analysis of the different citrus types and varieties, to see just how related they are. And this, they hope to clarify, but as I told you in an earlier module, citrus hybridize readily with each other. And so totally unraveling it might be impossible. But for our presentation purposes, we're going to have satsumas, as Anna has already done, set aside as a different type. And we're going to break out the mandarins. Uh, they're going to classify those as citrus reticulata. And the commercial varieties that are currently grown uh, and called commonly mandarins, those are not uh, the true wild mandarin, uh, which is citrus reticulata, and that is the one that's in the parentage of a lot of other varieties. Uh, but we have mandarins, we have tangerines, this one we're calling citrus tangerina, and it is actually a hybrid between a mandarin and a pomelo. So you got citrus reticulata crossed with citrus maxima, you come up with uh, citrus tangerina. So. Following that line of logic, it would be different from the mandarin, but it's also not a pomelo, so it's the tangerine. And then there's the tangelo. And the tangelo, you take a hybrid tangerine, cross that with a pomelo, and you end up with the tangelo. So uh, for presentation purposes, uh, these common names, satsuma, as Anna's already covered, mandarin, tangerine, and tangelo, we're separating those out as different types, and then we're going to go over the varieties that you can grow. Now, the characteristics of all of these is very similar. They have a loosely attached, easy to remove rind, as Anna's mentioned already, easily peeled just using your hands. You don't have to uh, have a knife or anything else to cut into them. Um, they should be harvested by clipping the stem to remove the fruit from the tree because uh, if you just grab the fruit and pull it off, you rip a little hole where the stem was attached, the stem stays attached to the tree, so now your citrus fruit <clears throat> is exposed to disease-causing organisms, rotting organisms, it won't last as long, plus you're leaving a little tiny bit of exposed peel attached to the tree, which in one case is not very attractive, and in another case, it could be an entry point for diseases. So when you're harvesting, you'll want to clip them off. Uh, most varieties of the mandarin, tangerine, and tangelo do have seed. Um, now a little bit difference in the fruits. The mandarin fruits are, are pre usually pretty small and flattened. Uh, the tangerine fruits, they're also small and flattened, but they have a very distinctive tangerine flavor. Usually you can tell a tangerine blindfolded just by its taste. And the ripened fruit, when it's fully colored, is usually a little bit of a red or orange color. The tangelo fruit, um, they're more orange, not so much red, and a lot of the tangelo varieties will have a little bump where the stem attaches to the tree. So uh, they call this the stem bump, and that's very obvious on a lot of the tangelo varieties. So what varieties are available for us uh, in our area? Uh, those are the ones we're going to cover. Other parts of the U.S. Uh, where they're grown, other varieties may be available, but we're going to cover these. One of them is the pumpkin mandarin. Uh, it's the most widely grown mandarin variety worldwide. Uh, it does have strong alternate bearing tendencies, and by that we mean one year the tree will be loaded with fruit. It'll be so much fruit that you think you're not going to have anything you can do with it all. You're giving it to friends, you're sharing it, you're making mandarin juice, you're eating mandarins every day, and it's covered with fruit. The next year, you're going to be calling us say, what's wrong with my tree? Last year it was covered with fruit. This year, I've only got 10 or 15 on there. That's what we mean by alternate bearing. And there are some varieties of citrus that are very strongly alternate bearing. Uh, the pumpkin mandarin is one. 
It has a mediumly thick uh, rind, a little bit thicker than the Setsumas would have. Uh, the seeds are going to be there, but there aren't that many. But it does have a little bit of a different growth habit to some of the other citrus that we've covered so far. A lot of the citrus, when we talk about them, we'll say uh, they're this soft, tall, and just as wide as they are tall. The punk and mandarin has more of an upright growth habit. So it will get taller, maybe up 15, 20 feet tall, but maybe only 10 feet wide. So that's a difference in the punk and mandarin. And you know, you'll be harvesting your ripe mandarins from the Ponca mandarin tree uh, sometime between December and January, around that range. Uh, now the Clementine mandarin, this is one which uh, a lot of you are used to. You're seeing them in the grocery stores. Uh, they become very popular. One of the reasons they become very popular is because uh, where they're being grown, they had a lot of money to put into advertising, and so that's made the fruit very popular. But it is a really nice fruit. They're small, sweet, uh, they're usually seedless. They have a deep orange, thin, glossy peel. Harvest them from October to December. Um, but there are multiple selections that are called the Clementine. And so because there are different collections called, or selections called Clementine, as you can see here, the UCR Citrus Variety Collection lists 18 different Clementine selections. So when you're buying that bag of Clementines in the grocery store, it could have multiple varieties in there. Uh, maybe early in the year, you're getting one variety. Later in the year, you're getting another variety. But they all are very similar in shape, uh, size, and flavor. Um, but there are at least diff 18 different uh, Clementine selections that are grown. And then there's the page mandarin. That's uh, sometimes sold as a page tangerine, and it's listed in the UCR citrus variety collection as page tangelo. So this is one that's going to cover the full gamut that we talked about earlier. Commonly, it can be called a mandarin. Other places, it's called a tangerine. Other places, it's called a tangelo. Uh, it harvests from November to January, so it has a pretty large uh, harvest season. Uh, has small to medium fruit that really holds well on the tree. Has very few seeds, but because it holds well on the tree, once they start getting ripe, you harvest them as you need them. And as Anna's already mentioned, uh, cold weather may actually make them a little bit sweeter. So um, they actually store better on the tree than if you pick them all and try to store them somewhere in your house. So this is one to grow if you want to just harvest as desired. Now we're moving into the tangerines. One of the Varieties that's readily available to us is the Dancy Tangerine, and it's a larger tree. It, you know, it's going to get up 20, 25 feet tall. Uh, it's very dense and will be quite wide. But the fruit, easy to peel like all of these fruits are. Um, the fruit does have seed, and so you'll have to watch that as you're eating them, and it doesn't hold well on the tree. So with the Dancy Tangerine, um, they'll be getting ripe somewhere December to February, depending on the, on the year and uh, as the fruit, each fruit ripens. But it's not going to hold well on the tree, so when it's ready, you want to pick it. Um, it does have alternate bearing tendencies, so one year you're going to get a lot, next year you're not going to get as many. And as we mentioned earlier, the tangerines and tangelos were an exception to the self-fertile trees. They need a pollinator. However, Dancy tangerine is self-fertile. So here's an exception to the exception. The Dancy tangerine does not need a pollinator. Now the sunburst tangerine, it does require a pollinator tree. Uh, it has a medium fruit and lots of seeds. So this is one that you're going to uh, enjoy the flavor, enjoy the fruit, but you're going to have to work at it as you eat it because you got to do something with those seeds. It has a, a flattened fruit, very thin rind, easily peeled, as most of all of these are. And the harvest period is very similar to some of the others, but sometime November to December. Now we're going to move into the tangelo. The one that's available to us readily down here is the Orlando tangelo. It still follows the exception. It does require a pollinator tree in order to get fruit. And the D Orlando tangelo is actually a hybrid between the Duncan grapefruit and the Dancy tangerine. Now remember we talked earlier about 
The Tenjuro was a hybrid between a hybrid and something else. And this one is a hybrid between the Dan Duncan grapefruit and the Dancy tangerine. Orlando Tangelo has medium fruit with a thin orange rind, but it doesn't peel quite as easily as some of the others that we've talked about. It adheres a little bit more to the fruit, and you can see in this picture, you can see that rind is definitely holding on to the fruit. And so it's not going to peel as easily. It does have seeds, so that's going to be there. And you have a harvest window that's you know, pretty long, December to January. Uh, but it's a really nice tasting fruit, really nice and sweet. So now we've gone over the mandarins, the tangerines, the tangelos. We covered the satsumas earlier. So those are some of the medium cold hardiness uh, trees that you can grow, citrus, and fruits that you can grow in our area and even further north. Now we're going to move into some of the less cold hardy varieties and types of citrus that are available. And these are going to stay mainly in the zone 9 area, zone 10 area. Um, so the previous classes went over those that you want to grow if you're a little further north. Now we're going to move into those that are strictly warm weather tropical fruits.